This is the Carlton Podcast. Here's your host, Tony Moclair. Hello and welcome to the Carlton Podcast. It's episode nine. Uh, your host, me, Tony Moclair, and my compadre, as he is for, I would say, probably nine out of ten weeks of the year, Mitch Robbo Robinson. Ten weeks in a, in a year. How are you, Robbo? Good, thanks, mate. How are you? Now, we're joined by a man who made his oh. debut for the Blues. Can't believe I, we've got him up here. Oh, well, no, this is good. This, this is... This okay, will get the most views. I reckon this will get the most views. Bear with me. This might come in handy one day when we do the segment, Do You Know Your Teammate, Mitch Robinson. We did that last week and I got it right. I know. Well, you're three from the last three, so you're on a roll. Um, our guest today, Robbo, made his debut for the Blues during uh, a round one clash against Richmond in 2010. He was prized from the grip of the Melbourne Football Club by the Blues in the highest profile deal of Trade Week in 2008. All up, he's played 78 games for the Blues. He's the tallest man to put on the famous navy blue Guernsey since Harry Madden. He is Robbie Warnock. Warnock. Thanks for having me. Great introduction. Oh, mate, that's uh, one of the shortest ones I've had so far. But... Should, uh, should not wait so long to come in next time when we're going to get pumped up like that. <laughs> well, you were saying you, you might have tagged in just one time with uh, Jamo. That was back in the dark old days. The show the that got cancelled. The show that got cancelled. Yeah. And yeah, revived. I've, but I've heard it's come a long way since then. So yeah. Mitch, Mitch taking control. And I've done well. It's hard to get up here. So That's <laughs> right. He's, he's an in and under podcaster. We've, like had, we've had Rob Warnock at the top of our list, but he doesn't give much to the media. So it's, it's First time I got asked, and as soon as I got asked, I, I jumped at the opportunity. So Player appearance. Glad to be here. Robbie, um, how do you rate the St Kilda game? What, what were the highlights for you? Uh, highlights, obviously the win. Um, so That's always good. Yeah, that always helps. Um, going to the bye, we've obviously got some things to work on, but it makes it probably working a little bit a bit easier. Um, good team game, I think. I think we, did, we didn't really... Uh, well, I mean, we had some blokes that played some great footy, but uh, everyone contributed, so it was, uh, it was a great win. Uh, your favourite game that you played this year, what would it be? He's had a few good games, I must yes, have he He's, He's yeah, taken, uh, taken a few scalps so far along the way. Probably West Coast. Uh, yeah. Will you play that, Mitch? Yeah, I'll play the game. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> West Coast. <laughs> slapping the face on Sydney. <laughs> no, you, you missed with... Uh, no, I had 20, mate. Keep the goal. You're all right. Well, who's counting? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, West Coast. I mean, obviously yeah. come from so far behind, so there it was, a, it was a great win. Uh, Robbo, your game uh, on Monday night? Yeah, it was... Um, Tell us about it. It was interesting. <laughs> we'll get to that a little bit later on. But uh, I had a good three quarters. Th- why? What was the feeling? I mean, I know I'd, I ask that every week, but there seemed to be a real sense of purpose about the team and uh, real yeah. determination to get the job done. I don't know. It's kind of that's been the second game I reckon this year where it's felt like our backs were against the wall. We kind of had a disappointing loss against um, Collingwood, where we thought you know we're winning with a pretty good chance. Um, yeah, we've, we've won three to the last four, which is good. And, you know, to get the win and go into a bye kind of makes it a lot better. You know, it makes your relaxation time the next four days a little bit better. So, you know, we'll come back um, early next week and we'll get stuck into it um, ready for a big game versus Adelaide. But, yeah, as we as Robbie touched on, um, it was a good four-quarter performance. I lacked a little bit in the third, but, yeah, we, we, we got away with the chockies. A couple of junk time goals there in the fourth quarter that were a little bit disturbing. Robbie, what did you make of that? I can't really remember. It. <laughs> oh. uh. <laughs> no, they had they had the four last shots of the game, and yeah. I think yeah the boys were, you know they gave a good three quarters, and I think you know we, we still we still kicked a couple of goals in the last quarter, so it wasn't too uh, nerve wracking. But yeah, we can see what happens with teams. We, like we kicked eight goals against Collingwood in the last quarter, so I guess you can call them junk time goals as well if you want. Now, uh, Robbie, you had a great game. You dominated the ruck against uh, Billy Longer. You Again. won forty out of. Uh, the hit outs to Longer's 26. Just a lazy but, uh, what do you put your good form down to at the moment? Is it a mental thing? Singham? Is it Got some good players around my feet, like Mitch, Mitch Robinson. Oh, oh, beautifully done. I haven't played midfield for three weeks. So <laughs> I like, I, I like oh, how you get I, there in spurts. So, oh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. in there. So that maybe start of the third quarter, he wasn't that's in there. Why, so that was the reason why. But I, like uh, it. I, I threw the compliment up there and he immediately palmed it off to Robbo. Yeah. No, nah, I, I, I took some soothers of the game last week because he just puts them down your throat every contest and I get a bit of a sore throat from that. So. No, nah, we nah, we got some. We got some. Obviously, some great mids. So that makes the job a lot easier. You've got Bryce, uh, Simo playing, going through there. Murph, Brock. So that makes your job a lot easier. So having those blokes around your feet, it's uh, it's great. And we can't rule out the bloke himself. He's been having probably six, seven clearances a game too. So he's actually, you know, I talk about that Nui being an agile bloke and all this kind of stuff, getting um, games and clearances. Look at the big man, Robbie Warnock. He's huge. How tall are you? 
Yeah, well, yeah, he's two eleven, yeah. mate. He knows what yeah. he is. No, not quite. Six foot ten. Uh, as six I said ten. before, I should come up here more often. If I'm going to get pumped up like this. So. Well, that I, I, I'm not sure if I'll fit through the door walking out with my. This is the most I talked to Robbie all year. You by honestly had to duck on the way in. What I do love about your game, Robbie, is your second efforts at stoppages. You, you, you go in hard. I love it. Yeah, I, I suppose it helps right. with the. I mean, I haven't done a lot of pre sins in my time, so it doesn't train much. This, really. uh, <laughs> This last uh, last year, I got a full preseason in, which was great. No no off season surgery, so it's probably the first time in a while. So that obviously helps building your fitness base, and then that flows into the game. So um, hopefully, from now on, I can uh, get full preseasons under my belt. How many Did how many years you got left of the club, by the way? Out of contract next year. <laughs> okay, Free agent. Uh, how many years no. you have to have at a club? Seven or is it all no. up? No, nah, it's uh, not sure. Okay, gotcha. we, we will get to contracts in a minute, Robbo. Um, Arizona, did you do the, the camp at Arizona? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was great. Um, obviously, with Dave Butterfield on board, it was a little bit different to the year before, but uh, as Robbo knows, it was a great experience to get over there and, and um, get you know closer with the boys. We are a, cl- a close group, but when you spend two weeks and doing uh, the tough things like the Canyon and the Humphreys Walk, you, you do bond a lot closer. And, and it's also great for the new guys, yeah. Daisy Thomas um, to come yeah, come along and, and get to know the group, so it, it's great. Is it especially harder on somebody of your size, a camp like that? Well, I was, uh, well he is taller, so he's probably I was higher. A little up. bit modified, I think, over there. It's just <laughs> yeah. the, the way my training loads are these days. But um, I reckon the modify was probably hard. I was doing that with you and Dave Butterfin just had like a double hip on me or something, and he mate, he's hip replacement. He's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's a maniac, mate. Yeah. He, he'll just train you eight hours straight. We had, to, we had to do equivalent to what they're doing in the Humphreys and Canyon and. We were pretty much spent. Yeah, yeah. So that that day, I reckon we had uh, it was like eight sessions, wasn't it? Eight so sessions. We had boxing, bike, weights, weights swim, swim, any everything you can think run, of. I was walk. like an ex ex fit champion by the end of it. Yeah, that's ex fit or CrossFit. CrossFit. Yeah. What's what's cross equal? What was cross equal? <laughs> cross equals X. So now, um, I mean, the obvious. Well, I guess <laughs> the question you must get asked a lot: the prospect of a twelve-hour. Uh, flight on a plane at somebody of your size. What I mean, what does that do to you? Yeah, not much. Not you, first class. No, no. <laughs> that's, that's too <laughs> much at all, mate. He's laid had, out to sleep the whole way. Yeah, you'd need to be paid like Juddy no, to no, be no, flying was, first. Uh, wouldn't you? Was a couple boys. We get an extra row at least, so that's handy. But um, yeah, to sleep a lot. Uh, now I just want to return to the St Kilda game. There was a couple of individual performances, not to, you know, of the caliber of Mitch Robinson's mark uh, over the top of Goldsack the week what a before. What mark that was? Jeez, we got off to a fly and then it was just downhill from there, wasn't it, Mitch? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had to put um, the whole team of getting in there enough. Yaz's goal, uh, Robbie. Did you see that firsthand, or where were you when when that uh, I think I miracle run with happened? him? And then he ended up about 150 meters in front of me in about 10 seconds. So yeah, there's no running to support when Yaz gets the ball. Um, but no, it's fantastic. Yeah, that's what Yaz can do. Uh, and he's so important to us. So the more he does that, then uh, the better team we are. Beautifully put, <laughs> Bravo. Two amazing individual performances from Bucks and Jamo. Um, I'll go to you first, Robbo. Uh, having kicked that goal after the mark <laughs> Got against three, deal, goal sack, converting beautifully, what did you make of Jamo's goal kicking? Because Foxtel only gave him, can what you believe this, Robbie Pornock, a 68% chance of getting it. That's, and he drilled that's it. That's pretty high for Jamo, yeah. let's be honest. <laughs> he was one one eleven, I think, one goal, 11 points. That's that, worse now, my track record at the moment. So. <laughs> but just explain oh, what that is, Robbo. One eleven is his career total. Yeah. He's played 118 games, so um, obviously he's been a pretty deep defender. But I was expecting a bit more on the celebration too. Yeah, when he yeah. ran against Hawthorne, his first one, it was. Uh, I think he was. I think he was sweating a fair bit. He told me um, that night after the game that uh, if he'd missed it, he, he would have. He wouldn't have come back to training for about a week. He reckons. So <laughs> he was more worried about the ribbing. He was going to get. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. Um, well, no, it was, it was. I was sitting around the 50 getting ready to set up, and I was just please put it through, Joe, because it'd be the biggest celebration going. But so you obviously backed him in if you were setting up. Yeah, that's why. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was setting up because you know where we have team rules and stuff, but. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, it was a great goal. What what was Jamo doing up there? I have no idea. Oh, I was actually on the bench and I said to someone, uh, I said the same thing, what's Jamo doing down there? I thought we'd lost it at all or something like that, so we had to send him forward, but um, I think he just popped down there. A couple leads. It'll be, uh, be happening a little bit more often if he's going to be doing that. Yeah, who was on Rewald most of the night? Because he was pretty quiet. Yeah, I think a few blokes rotated through him. Rowie was probably on him majority, but Jamo yeah. a bit, Whitey a bit, so okay. team it was a, effort. Yeah, it was a pretty team, good team effort from the back six. They, um, we made it a focus. He loves to get on on the offside when they're, when they're switching the ball. We made that a focus. And uh, you see Rowie and Whitey, their they're, they're spoils and stuff is just ridiculous. So yeah. 
if we keep that up, um, it'd be pretty hard to come by. He kicked four in the end, but you know, he's pretty, he's pretty good. Well, for, yeah, when I say quiet, four's not a bad <laughs> night at the office. <laughs> yeah, for him, but no, normally he can, he can tear a, a game apart. He's an amazing player. Uh, Bucks and uh, Troy Menzel. Do you want to talk about those two blokes and the night they had Robbie Warnock? Yeah, uh, when, you, when you think about it, men's is only 19 years old, so he's very, very it's, young. He's it's very 20, exciting. 20 this year, but towards the end of the year. So um, he's so far, he's been a great pickup for uh, for the club, so hopefully he can continue his great form. And how's he been around the club this week? Because he'd be, yeah. Same I don't want to say bit of, cocky. Bit but of head, head wobble, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> he's probably the his, most obvious. Awesome Whitey's neck brace, I think, came out to control that head wobble of his. So. Yeah. <laughs> but no, he's, uh, it's great. I mean, it's great to see the young boys come in and play some great footy, and, and same as Dylan Buckley. He's um, he's having a bit of a run, isn't he, for the back line? He is. It's great. And he, obviously, his old man played here. He he, he bleeds blue, pretty much. So um, it's great. Yeah, it's great for the club to have that family tradition come through, and, and Bucks is, is playing some great great footy. And that's a, a credit to himself after the hard work. You know, he's had a few injuries along the way, but... Mm. Um, he's put on a bit of weight, thank he's goodness. He's persisted, 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 worked hard, and... And playing some great footy, so it's uh, it's credit to him. And signed a two year deal, by the way, which is excellent news. It's great, great news to have him down here. Fantastic, well, you. deserved uh, it, mate. What? We'll sp- I'll throw this question to both of you. When when your contract so has a, you come to the end of a contract term, and there's the uncertainty about whether or not it will get renewed, it must surely have some effect on your playing. You you must be slightly distracted to a degree, or is that not true? Oh, I did this year because um, you know we had Murphy Gibber. Yaron, everyone's out of contract, so you know you need to play well to um, you know get the new deal because there won't be any money left over. <laughs> I was going to go somewhere with it, and you guys gave me nothing. I was. Uh, does it play on your uh, Does it play on your mind? Probably uh, a little bit deep down, but you just try and worry about week to week performances, mm. really, um, and hopefully the rest takes care of itself. So. Um, no, not not so much, but uh, you know it is something you, you'd like, like to get done sooner rather than later. Well, uh, speaking of those who have, uh, Murph, we mentioned, Kate Simpson and Andrew Walker have both done it. Where are you with your contract at the moment, Robbie? Yeah, so I'm, I'm out next year, so still got, uh, so what's that, about 18 months here, so yep. really enjoying my time here, and uh, if we can keep up the form we have the last month or so, then it's, uh, it'd be great for us. Who, when you came to Carlton, who did you who did you live with? Did you live with another player, or what was so your? So I'm a Melbourne boy originally, so I uh, lived with mum and dad for the first six months, and then yeah. moved out with my brother for the last few until he went over to the Gold Coast. So I'm um, actually living with Ryan Horhan now. Ah, oh, hot so, lips. So, yeah. uh, Open up a restaurant. Bit of, bit give of a plug. plug out to the listeners out there. Rustic yeah. Co. Out in um, I think it's Deer Park. <laughs> Oh, that so, far? Yeah, but no, I get on the go. freeway. It's not too, not too far. I, so. I can't afford toll roads at the moment, mate. It's just get <laughs> out there. It's one of the best restaurants going around. Modern Australian, fantastic restaurant, fantastically managed <laughs> just, and run. Yes. So he can't get bad down, down there. By, by a great servant of the Carp Football Club, we uh, love play? Ryan Hullahan. Um, it, I mean, are you taken aside when you start at the club and are you giving warnings about any particular players to avoid? Is there, you know... I was actually the there. same year as, as Mitch, so... Yeah, Rob didn't actually like him to start when he first got here. He gave me donuts. I was trying to... That was a private conversation, Mitch. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, no, he's actually, yeah, he's a good bloke. Uh, get along no, no, him. no. There's, uh, me and Mitch probably got off to a rocky start, but obviously <laughs> come a long way since then. <laughs> um, I like it. It's got the, it's got the, uh, the makings of a great buddy comedy. Well, but now you're getting along it's, it's perfectly. It's flourished. It's well, definitely flourished. We'll see when I write my book when I finish my career. Right. <laughs> chapter uh, six. <laughs> <laughs> For chapter one, that's my first oh, year. chapter one. <laughs> me and Rob. Now, um, we mentioned Chris Yaron's goal. That's been nominated for Hungry Jack's Goal of the Year. How has Yaz been around the club uh, this week, Robbie? Oh. Yeah, head wobble again. So yeah. you, him, you, you him and men's aren't too far The two blokes are just... Far apart. You, know, they, you know when they play well, those two fellas. Um, Yaron obviously starts talking about, oh, you know, Robbo, lucky he got a week because he wouldn't play next week anyway, all this kind of stuff. So, you know, he, um, he sent out a few texts. Uh, Eddie Betts was involved in a few, saying, "I'll oh, get ahead of yourself, yeah, and trying to take four bounces goal of the year and stuff." But um, yeah, this one might actually be a, a genuine one because his last goal of the year was actually out of bounds when he was taking a bounce. So yeah, uh, it might be a. That's right, he's won one already. He's won one already, as I say. So it's not, no news to us. We know what he can do. Now, Robbo, what are you doing for the break? Um, the I'm bike. actually going to Adelaide. Uh, I leave tomorrow morning. I'm taking the son and the missus over to Adelaide. I'm actually staying at Eddie's house for a, for a, for the trip. So yeah, um, yeah I'll catch up with my teammate Aaron Joseph and um, Joey Anderson. So yeah, we'll have a few of the boys over there. There's now, a few of the there? boys getting over there. So Luke I think Mitchell, Luke Reece Mitchell, oh, wow. Paddy McCarthy. There's a few blokes that went back to Adelaide. So I won't catch up with all them. But 
um, yeah, it'll be a good little four days away just to, you know, clear the mind and come back ready for Brisbane. <laughs> Adelaide. Me. Oh, yep. yep. Are we yep. playing? Yep. Yep. Brisbane. We've got Brisbane. No, we've got Adelaide no, next week, got but a, I've got a week off. He's got the week. He's got the week. Hopefully you can use the break wisely and get inside Eddie's head. I'll just go through his bag and stuff up. and try and see if he's got any leftover... What is those make sure... See their make plays. sure... Yeah. Uh, what's your little boy's name? He is. Yours. Oh, Chance. Make sure Chance has very sleepless nights. Yes. So. I'll try uh, and do So when, uh, when it comes to us, Eddie's fatigued. That's yes. what we want. And Robbo... Uh, sorry, Robbie, what are you doing? Robbie and Robbo, what are you doing for the break? Uh, I'm hanging around town. I've got a mate's engagement party, so I'm in the bridal party for that. So I'll hang around for that and then uh, barbecue the next day for the bridal party. So won't get away this time, but hopefully later in the year I'll uh, get up and get some sun somewhere. But I'm um, hanging around Melbourne for, for this break. Okay. Um, Robo, talk us through it. Through what? Well, Monday night. Prove it was me because you can't see my face. <laughs> so someone could have been wearing my jumper. Yeah. No, you're nah, right. That's look, a watertight look, it's alibi. something to laugh about. Obviously, you know, I've I've just started to find a little bit of form and uh, find a little bit of consistency in the team and stuff. And to lose a week's kind of annoying, but you know, that's, that's match review panel, and you know, they're getting a few right lately. So it's obviously uh, uh, hurts us. Mitch is a very important player to us, so we're going to yep. have to have someone come in to replace him. So um, yeah, it's just pointing for the team. But, yeah, uh, no. give someone an opportunity for a week, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll get Mitch back against. Uh, hopefully, against come back in weeks. against the winning, you know, in a winning side. Can we just put it into context though? You are hard on the sleeve kind of player. You go hard. You, what is your record at the tribunal? I've actually haven't been suspended before in football, so I thought they would have taken that into consideration. VFL level is a little bit different, but yeah, AFL I've, I've been pretty clean, just a few fines here and there. Okay, so that week off, that enforced week off, will you play VFL? No, I don't think I don't think you can play any Not footy at all. So no, it, it. it's kind of you can take look at it as a bad thing, but I can also you know get the body right and get the get the mind fresh and clean, ready to come into Brisbane and you know really step it up for the middle part of our season and hopefully bring it home the last. So, can I just ask? Uh, so if if I had a brain snap like that, one of the people I would probably fear apart from the tribunal is possibly the reaction of my wife. Did Emma did Emma say anything? <laughs> no, no, no. She um she well it was kind of like. A grey area because people didn't really know if I hit him properly or I'm not too sure, but yeah, everyone kind of... Well, you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> no, Emma, Emma doesn't care. She's just like, she's just, yeah, she backs me up no matter what. So, you know, it's not a bad thing showing your aggression and stuff. You just got to um, pull it back a bit when it gets to that level. Okay. Robbie, have you ever been, have you ever done time, so to speak? Have you done time? Like in any, uh, in any of the codes you've played? Uh, don't know. I'd, uh, got reported this year, which was a bit of a joke. That was actually yeah, that was actually um, pretty good. Maybe a few years ago I did some time. Got a reprimand early in my career. Okay. I'm not a thug like Robbo though, no. so. <laughs> <laughs> Dif- different upbringing, Brighton versus. Oh yes, Tassie, that'd you know, be it. So. Yeah. Tassie boy. <laughs> yes, Brighton. All right, here we go. Well, Brighton. Brighton. Have we yeah, have we touched on Michael Jamison resigning? Oh uh, well, let's do that is now. It, is it just Dylan Buckley. It is very good news that we can announce that Jamo has re-signed. Oh. Being the bookish type, he certainly oh. knows how to handle oh, a pen. Three years. Uh, it's a three-year deal, so he will, in all likelihood, be a one-club player. Which uh, is he, obviously a great thing for him. What is he? Twenty-eight this year. Twenty-eight so this it's year. A, yeah, it's it's great for the club. Great for Jemo. He's obviously, as everyone knows, he's one of the our most important players. So um, yeah, to have him here for another three years, it uh, it strengthens our team. He's come along with it. You know, he's a rookie, elevated leadership group for the last four years. Um, you know, he's a massive leader to the club, and to have him, you know, pencil in, kind of, you know, leads away for the other boys. You know, we've had four big signings this year, so it goes to show there's no there's no leaning back, you know, that we didn't have a good start of the year, but everyone's kind of, you know, we, we know we've got big things coming and, uh, you know, it's just going to take us time. And given that he was a free agent, I'm sure he would have had a lot of clubs after him, given yeah. oh, how, important tell you he, what. how important player he is. So it's great that he's shown the faith in the club. And, uh, and Ballarat would have been looking years. for him too. Wouldn't well, I, I think part of that, Robbie, without meaning to kind of, Blow our own trumpet here. He harbours a desire to co-host the podcast again. Ooh, he does. Geez. He asked for a call up, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, I texted he him his after goal. his goal. He had a good week. He had a good week. I texted him after his. I said, "Goal of the century." And he wrote and back. He, he wrote back, "Get me on the podcast." <laughs> Get me on the podcast. Well, <laughs> talk about another bloke with head wobble. He's right yeah, up there. After say, after hearing it. that, Jamo, come so on, man. Yaron Menzel and Jamison head wobble this week. Okay, well, get them in neck braces as soon as possible. We don't want uh, any, don't want any injuries, injuries there. Um, okay, now, uh, Robbie's first time appearance on the podcast as a guest, so we're going to hit him, Robbo, with 
do you know your teammates, Mitch Robinson and Rob Warnock? Favourite part of the show. I've won three the last three, so... How many questions are there? Uh, well, here's how it works. I'll throw out a bunch of clues, and as soon as you know the answer, you just say it. Last so time we had, a, we had a face-off, I won. When was that? Uh, Mick Malthouse's first club. That wasn't me? Oh, yeah. Well, that yep. was you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you won that one because I thought it was you Richmond. You said Richmond. I said Richmond. Oh, that's Fitz, what I would have said. St Kilda. St Kilda. Okay, so you still got There you go. Wow. That wasn't that long ago. Uh, right, here so we go. One nil. I'm guessing you didn't go to Brighton Tech, Robbie. No. Are you right no, in no, that? No. I, I still got my degree in um, grade nine, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. The strange things you find in Wheaties packets. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, you got my license from a Wheat Bix <laughs> packet, mum said. Uh, Okay, here we go. Do you know your teammates, Mitch Robinson and Rob Warnock? Good luck, by the way, Rob. Hey, do we have a buzzer? Are you just using a... No, you just get out there ASAP. Oh, okay. Which probably doesn't work with a Robbie and a Robbo. Just... Anyway, I will adjudicate. I'm the true Robbo. I'll be so tough but fair. Um, I don't even know, if, according to the <laughs> AFL, if you're even allowed to take place in this while suspended, Robbo. Well, no, nah, because I actually rang them up the other day and I confirmed it Walk and they over. said go for it because he won three in a row and, you know, Rob's been getting out of the trap saying he's, he's won nil, so... All right, well, let's, let's go. go. Let's decide this once and for all. So what is this? Just a who am I? Yes. You just got to pick one. A, it's one of the players. Still okay. currently on the list. All right. Clue number one. I made my debut for Carlton during their, their or our round 21 clash against Melbourne in 2004. Jared White. No. Before being traded to the Blues, I was drafted by my original club in the 2002 rookie draft as selection number five. Scotland. No. Oh. Clue number three. I come from a family of Carlton supporters that goes Andrew back Grazzo. to... Win- oh. I- yes, oh, mate. That's one all. Yeah. One all. Row, row, one all. Row. Yeah. One all. Four in a row for the Rob Dog. One all. Uh, that goes Finish back to when my great grandfather migrated to Australia in 2011. I became a member of the Blues Leadership Group. At the beginning of 2012, my wife gave birth to not one but three, three my babies. My Sicilian brother. In, in 2013, I was appointed <laughs> joint vice captain Robo, of the club. Robbie's dirty. Look at his face. Carrots. Is that it? Just one. That's it. Yeah. That's <laughs> mate. You only get Dan? one chance up on this That's podcast. Dan? Mate, come on. I'm. Bro- <laughs> you don't understand how happy I am. This finishes off my day. I can well, go great. home, see my Good boy, way. and just like give him a big hug and kiss, and be like, you know what? I've won four in a row chance. That's two wins in Where's a week, going? Robbo. I've been Good doing work. my You've homework. You've got the same notes in front of you. Yeah, so do you. Oh, oh here we go. Yes, you do. Oh, we'll oh, go to the match too. review then, will we, Robbie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. Uh, Robbie Wardock, thank you so much for coming in. No worries. Pleasure and a delight to have you in on the Cup Podcast. Try and get back up here sooner rather than later. We oh, certainly hope so. Me. Good luck for your next game, Robbo. Thanks, mate. I appreciate that. And uh, good luck against Adelaide. Thank you. And uh, enjoy your bridal party. Nice, you, know, you know. Be safe and oh, what? the bridal party. Engagement. Engagement. Well, you said bridal party. You did say bridal party. Didn't you? Did I? You did. Yeah, yeah. you said it twice. So I yeah. um, said I'm in the bridal party. So I'm. Um, ah, uh, you did too. Yes, Mads. Can we get clarification here? Just replay. Uh, it. Right. Yeah. Bridal. Bridal. You said bridal party. Yeah, you did. Okay, I'm in the engagement party. No, <laughs> there's an engagement party and I'm in the bridal party, so I'm... I'm a, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. You didn't say anything about engagement party. Uh, you don't have to give a speech or anything, do you? No. Right. No, which is not my forte, so I'm looking... Oh, I think really? I think you've been well smashing it up no. here. Yeah. Just um, make sure they can cut it out when you're doing the, you know, the speech at the bridal party. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we might do an OB from there. Uh, Robbie, thank you. Is Good luck next week. And next week we are going to preview our round 10 clash against the big one. Adelaide at the MCG because we will we will not be having a buy on the podcast. We will be back next week to give dedicated. you all the latest Hard work, dedication. On what's going on around the Carlton Football Club. Uh, Robbo, thank you so much. No Mitch worries, Robinson, man. myself, Tony Moakley signing out for the Carlton Podcast. Thanks for listening.